Within the first planet, there's a cooling emergency. This planet shrinking much faster, yes, I am Mercury. In 2004, NASA launched the Messenger Probe. It traveled 1260 days to reach Mercury from their globe. Messenger took about 100,000 images by 2012, mapping 99% on my surface so you can see it well. These images were sent to scientists back Suspect. They saw wrinkles and rifts on Mercury's surface. It's like a raisin orbiting the sun. But why is this? Scientists confirm Mercury is shrinking since its distant past. Over 4 billion years, it's 8 miles smaller in diameter, shrinking fast. The reason Mercury is shrinking is because its cooling core will look inside the planet to see if we can learn more. Mercury has a large metallic core. Discuss. When the core does cool over this amount of time, a planet will shrink. You have learned this in this rhyme. When the planet's core cools, the surface shrinks with it, causing rifts and valleys to occur, looking like a raisin, I admit. To shrink, heat must have escaped out of its cooling core. This heat must have escaped through its mantle via heat pipes like a door. Within the first planet, there's a this planet shrinking much faster, yes I am Mercury. Venus is the second planet from the sun, so why is it the hottest planet in the solar system? Venus has a thick atmosphere full of the greenhouse gas, carbon dioxide and clouds of sulfuric acid that does amass. These gases create an extremely thick atmosphere, trapping heat within its surface on this very hot sphere. This greenhouse effect makes us the hottest planet you will see in the solar system, even hotter than Mercury. Its atmosphere is so thick it creates a surface pressure similar to half a mile deep in Earth's ocean, I'm sure. Venus has a surface temperature of 900 degrees, which is hot enough to melt the metal lead with ease. If a human were to stand on the surface of Venus, this pressure would be so great that human would be crushed due to the high surface pressure and sulfuric acid clouds and heat from the thick atmosphere. Life can't exist here now. Recently, scientists think they found a Goldilocks zone in the atmosphere, which would be perfect to support life. Let's see what they shared. They had found traces of a molecule called phosphine. Some organisms do produce this. Let's see what that means. Phosphine's associated with microbial life, so science says it's found in oxygen-free environments like swamps and sludges. Phosphine's also associated with feces from animals on Earth. If it exists on Earth's environment, Venus might have life, of course. Using the James Clerk Maxwell telescope in Hawaii is how Jane Greaves detected a hint of the molecule phosphine. This means that life could exist in Venus's atmosphere with non-oxygen using microbes producing it, which I share. After lots of testing and trying to create phosphine without life, using Venus's atmosphere and geology, scientists failed with strife. So far, the only explanation that has come from scientists is that you can't produce phosphine without life, so it must exist. And if life does exist in the atmosphere of hot Venus, then what other life could exist on? other planets venus is the second planet from the sun so why is it the hottest planet in the solar system i am the first planet from our sun you see my name is mercury nothing orbits faster than me the smallest planet with the second hottest degree My name is Mercury No one is smaller than me Messenger of the gods is what Mercury means The Romans gave me my name Cause I'm the fastest they'd seen A bit bigger I'd be than the Earth's moon that you see To fill the Earth one time It would take 18 of me I am the first planet 
from our sun that beams But I'm the second hottest I can reach 800 degrees 88 Earth days is the amount that I take To orbit our sun once That makes one year on me I am the first planet From our sun you see My name is Mercury Nothing orbits faster than me The smallest planet with the second hottest degree My name is Mercury No one is smaller than me 59 Earth days equals one day on me My surface is made of stone Covered in craters you see Oxygen, sodium, hydrogen, helium, and potassium Make up my exosphere I have no moons and I have no rings But I'm the second densest planet amongst other things I am the first planet from our sun you see My name is Mercury, nothing orbits faster than me The smallest planet with the second hottest degree My name is Mercury, no one is smaller than me Possibly said. 
centuries. A Cassini mission explored Saturn for 13 years. On September 15, 2017, it plunged into Saturn's atmosphere. Cassini spacecraft took pictures of the hexagon storm with power. A movie was created from seven images taken over five hours. In Saturn's North Pole, there's something strange going on. There's a six-sided jet stream shaped like a hexagon. What are tidally locked space objects and why do they exist? Let's take a look at some mountain space to learn more about this. Tidal locking occurs when one of a pair of co-orbiting astronomical bodies reaches a state where there's no longer any net change in its rotation. See, this happens in a rate over the course of a complete orbit, you know. Let's take a look at how this happens in the rest of the show. Shortly after the moon's formation in the ancient past, the moon was rapidly spinning so very fast that meant the part of the moon ball chain towards the earth was constantly changing like water tides on earth through gravity's force vast amounts of rock needed to change shape and shift to eventually bulge towards the earth like this but once those bulges settled in a weight towards the earth just a bit out of alignment with earth's pull of gravity of course these bulges act Once they were held, they were torqued back into place and behold, the moon's rotation slowed over time, this new speed it did adopt. Now the moon is facing the earth forever tidally locked. The sides of the moon bulge outward pointing towards the earth and away, while the other sides are pulled inward to compensate. This means the moon isn't actually round like you thought it was, it is shaped like a football and now you know the cause. Did you know that all major moons? of the planet Jupiter are tidally locked of this, I am sure. Europa, Io, Callisto, and Ganymede are the moons of Jupiter tidally locked. Now you see, Saturn's moons are also tidally locked to it. There are 16 of them in this position they sit. Dwarf planet Pluto and its largest satellite Charon have the same surfaces facing each other as their orbit spins on. Their phenomenon is called mutual tidal locking. The solar system's only known double planetary system I do sing. When looking at Mars, the third planet from the sun, we will see. Phobos and Deimos will be tidally locked eternally. What are tidally locked space objects and why do they exist? Let's take a look at some mountain space to learn more about this. A galactic tides, a tidal force so real, experienced by objects by a gravitational field of a galaxy such as the Milky Way. But these types of tides only happen in space. There are particular areas concerning galactic tides, like galactic collisions when two galaxies collide, the disruption of a dwarf or a starlit galaxy, which creates a new elliptical super galaxy. These tidal effects are usually limited to the immediate surroundings of a galaxy, it is true. In theory, in about 5 billion years, astronomers have theorized our galaxy's biggest fears. Astronomers think the Milky Way will be pulled by gravity towards Andromeda, the nearest galaxy. A galactic tide will pull these two galaxies in a close encounter to each other through gravity. When this happens, the center of the galaxies will certainly merge, pouring gas towards the center, igniting an explosion for sure. This will create star formation a hundred times faster than a galaxy does today, says the astronomers. For example, take our tides in the ocean, attracted to the gravitational pull from the moon's motion. When the moon is on one side of the earth, the 
ocean is higher on that side pulled by the moon's gravitational force the galactic tide is similar you can see it all has to do with this thing called gravity a galactic tides a tidal force so real experienced by objects by a gravitational field of a galaxy such as the milky way but these types of tides only happen in space There's over 200 billion galaxies in the observable universe that we might see. Let's look at this galaxy size comparison from small to big, of course, now here we come. I'm Segway 2, I'm a dwarf spheroidal galaxy, situated in the constellation of Aries. My radius is 110.89 light years, they say. Discovered in 2009 by Sloan Digital Sky Survey. My name's Messier32, a dwarf early type galaxy, am I? 2.65 million light years from Earth, I fly. I was discovered in the year of 1749. I am 6,500 light years across, and that's just fine. I'm small, Magellanic Cloud, or Nubicula Minor, a dwarf irregular. Galaxy, there's nothing finer. I'm near the Milky Way, but not a stone's toss. My diameter's about 7,000 light years across. I'm Triangulum, a spiral galaxy. You see, sometimes I'm referred to as a pinwheel galaxy. I was discovered officially in 1764. I'm 50,000 light years across. This info is now yours. I'm the Whirlpool Galaxy, also called Messier 51. I'm a spiral galaxy, my arms reach out while I'm spun. I was first discovered in the year of 1773. 76,000 light years is the distance across me. I'm the Milky Way Galaxy, a gigantic spiral disk with a bright central bulge that you can't miss. I'm 100,000 light years, your sun is 8 kpc from my center. On what is known as Orion's arm, it's a real bender. I'm Hope's object, a non-typical galaxy of the type known as a ring galaxy, as you can see. 121,000 light years across, bigger than the Milky Way, discovered by author Hogan, 1958. There's over 200 billion galaxies in the observable universe that we might see. Let's look at this galaxy size comparison from small to big, of course, now here we come. I'm the Cartwheel Galaxy, a lenticular and ring galaxy, discovered by Fritz Wicke in 1941. I'm 150,000 light years across, my beauty is number one. I am M101, also known as the Pinwheel Galaxy, discovered by Pierre Michon in 1781, if you please. I'm 170,000 light years across, nearly twice the size of the Milky Way, now that's quite a toss. I'm the Andromeda Galaxy, a spiral galaxy, I say, in the nearest major galaxy to your Milky Way. My name stems from the constellation of Andromeda. I'm 220,000 light years across, I'll be seeing ya. I'm NGC 6872, also known as Condor Galaxy. I'm a large part spiral galaxy, I'm sure you'd agree. Discovered in 1835 by John Herschel, the boss. I'm very large at 700,000 light years across. I'm the giant temple galaxy, a disrupted part spiral, you see, I was discovered in the year of 2018 i'm 10 times the size of the milky way that's extremely large my friend i'm 1 million light years long from end to end i'm ic 1101 a super giant elliptical galaxy i'm one of the largest known galaxies found in your universe you see discovered in the year of 1790 by john herschel six million light years across with stars i am full there's over 200 billion galaxies in the observable universe that we might see let's look at this galaxy size comparison from small to big of course now here we come we're all stars we're all stars
stars compared to each other by size You can see a lot of us when you look into the night sky We're all stars, we're all stars, our colors vary, you know We're made mostly of hydrogen and helium, here we go I'm the Crab Pulsar, a young neutron star I'm Calvera, an isolated neutron star that's far my name's Bela X1, I'm a neutron star as well. Sirius B, that's me, a small white dwarf as you can tell. I'm EBLMJ 555-57AB. My name's Trappist 1, an ultra cool red dwarf star in sight. I'm Proxima Centauri, a main sequence red dwarf star. I am your son, a yellow dwarf that isn't too far. Alpha Centauri A is an orange star, you see. I am Sirius A, a main sequence star, that's me. We're all stars, we're all stars, compared to each other by size. You can see a lot of us when you look into the night sky. We're all stars, we're all stars, our colors vary, you know. We're made mostly of hydrogen and helium, here we go. VFTS-352, contact binary 1 and 2 Composed of two very hot brain massive stars that orbit each other, it's true My name is Pollux, a red giant star here Arcturus is a red giant star, I hope I made that clear R-136A1 is a wolf riot star thus far I'm Alda Baron, a red giant star, that's me Rigel is here, a blue-white supergiant you can see. I am Beetlejuice and I'm a red supergiant in class. V.Y. Canis Majoris, a red hypergiant star with mass. I'm U.I. Scutai, the biggest red supergiant this far. Join us to sing the chorus, now get your head out of the stars. We're all stars, we're all stars, compared to each other by size. You can see a lot of us when when you look into the night sky We're all stars, we're all stars Our colors vary, you know We're made mostly of hydrogen and helium Here we go We're all stars, we're all stars Compared to each other by size You can see a lot of us When you look into the night sky We're all stars, we're all stars Our colors vary, you know We're made mostly of hydrogen and helium Helium, here we go! I am the Milky Way Galaxy Look in the night sky to see a part of me I am the Milky Way Galaxy Your solar system's just a tiny part of me The Milky Way name came from a Greek goddess named Hera Spilled milk across the sky Greeks believed in that era When you look at the darkest sky On a clear summer night And you see the image of the Milky Way Clear in sight Remember you can only see A small part of me Called the galactic core In my galaxy Astronomers can't look at me From outside the galaxy Because I'm so massive And you don't have the technology Based on other galaxies we see outside of our own is why we conclude that our galaxy spiraled as I'm shown when you look at a side view of the Milky Way here you see me as a flat disc with a bulge center I appear I am the Milky Way galaxy look in the night sky to see a part of me I am the Milky Way galaxy your solar system's just a tiny part of me I was born about 13.6 billion years ago That's a hypothesis given from astronomers though I am 100,000 light years in diameter That's an estimate given by NASA though they can't be sure Your solar system's this tiny dot that you see right here Astronomers think that Orion's first where your system appears Your system's guess to be 25,000 light years from the galactic center of the Milky Way shown here About 230 million years is what your system takes To orbit around the Milky Way center's cool shape 
200 to 400 billion stars live in me That's an estimate only based on our astronomy Over 100 billion planets might exist in me Maybe someday you can see them in our galaxy I am the Milky Way Galaxy Look in the night sky to see a part of me I am the Milky Way Galaxy Your solar system's just a tiny part of me Let's take a look at all the parts that you think I'm made of We'll start by looking down at the galaxy above the galactic core's the rotational center you can't see Because of the interstellar dust it cannot be studied It's believed the center is a supermassive black hole When astronomers find out more than I will let you know You'll notice the galactic bar and also the long bar There's the three KPC arms, there is a near and there's a far Then we have the Sagittarius and the Norma arms Then the Orion spur solar system spins on the scutum centaurus and perseus arm our two major spirals and full of the galaxy's charm finally the outer arm and the new outer arm are the final spirals i will mention in this song i am the milky way galaxy look in the night sky to see a part of me i am the milky way your solar system's just a tiny part of me I am the Milky Way Galaxy Look in the night sky to see a part of me I am the Milky Way Galaxy Your solar system's just a tiny part of me I am you I scoot I The largest star in our galaxy Find me in the night sky I am you I scoot I A red super giant in the Scootum constellation am I I was first cataloged in 1860 by German astronomers at Bonn Observatory I was named BD-125055 Until my second survey I was found to be slightly more bright That's when I was named UI Scutai The 38th variable star of the constellation Scutum Am I? I'm the largest known star in the Milky Way galaxy But because I'm so far from Earth You need a telescope to see me I'm 30 times the sun's mass But I have a radius more than 1700 times greater than the Earth's sun I span I am UI Scutai The largest star in our galaxy Find me in the night sky I am UI Scutai A red super giant in the Scutum constellation Am I? I'm 9500 light years away from your Earth One light year equals about 5.88 trillion miles I'm known to be one of the most luminous stars And I am a red super giant, I hope you like me so far I'm close to the supermassive black hole Sagittarius A Galactic center, which is the center of our galaxy I'm so large if you replaced your sun with me My photosphere would span past Jupiter's orbit As you can see, I begun to fuse helium and continue to fuse hydrogen in the shell around my core based on models of stellar evolution after fusing heavy elements my core will begin to produce iron disrupting the balance of gravity and radiation in its core and resulting in a core collapse supernova which is expected in stars like me look for me in the night sky within your galaxy i am ui scutai the largest star in our galaxy, find me in the night sky. I am UI Scutai. A red super giant in the Scutum constellation, am I? I am UI Scutai. The largest star in our galaxy, find me in the night sky. I am UI Scutai. 
A red super giant in the Scootum constellation am I? Earth has a second moon, it's me, provisionally designated, 2016 HO3, Kamu Abrava is thought to be an asteroid, but that may have changed with new facts that we can avoid. I was first spotted in April of 2016, by Pan Stars. Asteroid Survey Telescope You now see This telescope is located on Haleakala In Hawaii Which is all part of the Haleakala Observatory When I was discovered orbiting the Earth in a weird way What's the name they gave me even though it is extremely hard to say? I am very small compared to Earth's moon measuring 164 feet across. I'm tiny, it's true. I circle the Earth in a repeating corkscrew-like trajectory. Never closer than 40 to 100 times the 239,000 mile distance of your moon you see. I'm odd and this is why I don't reflect brightly in certain infrared frequencies or to the eye like other asteroids do. I'm a quirky satellite and this is true. Because of this, researchers are starting to agree I may be a chip off your known moon flying free. Basically what you're seeing is a flying silicate caused by micrometeorite impacts in the space environment. It's possible when space rocks hit the moon at a high degree. When I was ejected into space, I am lunar debris. I am a near-Earth object also known as Neo, part of a group of near-Earth asteroids called Apollo. I'm an object in a specific type of core orbital configuration with a planet. I'm called a quasi satellite. I know it's weird, but I didn't plan it. Earth has a second moon. It's me, provisionally designated. 2016 HO3, Kamu Abrava is thought to be an asteroid, but that may have changed with new facts that we can avoid. My name is Jupiter, the biggest planet you see. No planet in our solar system is bigger than me. My name
pressure and temperature within me to cause hydrogen to fuse with helium, creating energy. My gravity is 2.4 times more than Earth, so what does that mean? Weighing 100 pounds on Earth is 240 pounds on me. My name is Jupiter, the biggest planet you see. No planet in our solar system is bigger than I am Venus, I'm the second planet from the sun, and I'm the slowest rotating one of all the planets in our solar system. Now learn and have some fun. 243 Earth is how long it takes for me to orbit the sun. That makes just one of my days. I'm 900 degrees, yeah that's Fahrenheit. I'm the hottest planet in the solar system, that's right. The sun sets in my east and comes up in my west due to retrograde rotation. I spin backwards the best. I'm the third brightest object to the naked eye from the planet of Earth when you look up in the sky. I am Venus, I'm the second planet from the sun, and I'm the slowest rotating one of all the planets in our solar system. Now learn and have some fun. Carbon dioxide and sulfuric acid clouds is what makes up my atmosphere and for this I am very proud. Volcanoes, mountains, craters, and some big lava plains are what make up my bumpy surface and my clouds make no rain. I was named Venus after the goddess of love. The Romans gave me my name due to my brightness above. I am Venus, I'm the second planet from the sun. And I'm the slowest rotating one of all the planets in our solar system. Now learn and have some fun. I'm a star called the sun. I'm the center of our solar system. You revolve around me as we fly around the galaxy. All of the planets in our solar system, they orbit while well, they follow me. 230 million years is the time I take to fly around the Milky Way galaxy. I don't have a solid surface so made up of gases held together by my own gravity. I'm made of 92.1% hydrogen H2 and 7.8% helium HE. I'm a star called the sun. I'm the center of our solar system. You revolve around me as we fly around the galaxy. My core is 25% of my total mass and 27 million degrees. My energy is the reason there is life on Earth. There'll be no charge, cause I'm totally free. My mass makes up 99.8% of our solar system. Nothing in our system's hot as me. I'm a star called the sun. I'm the center of our solar system.
I am the first planet from our sun, you see. My name is Mercury. Nothing orbits faster than me. The smallest planet with the second hottest degree. My name is Mercury. No one is smaller than me. Messenger of the gods is what Mercury means. The Romans gave me my name, cause I'm the fastest they'd seen. A bit bigger I be than the Earth's moon that you see. To fill the Earth one time, it would take 18 of me. I am the first planet from our sun that beams, but I'm the second hottest. I can reach 800 degrees. 88 Earth days is the amount that I take to orbit our sun once. That makes one year on me. I am the first planet. From our sun you see, my name is Mercury, nothing orbits faster than me. The smallest planet with the second hottest degree, my name is Mercury, no one is smaller than me. 59 Earth days equals one day on me, my surface is made of stone, covered in craters you see. Oxygen, sodium, hydrogen, helium, and potassium make up my exosphere. I have no moons and I have no rings, but I'm the second densest planet amongst other things. I am the first planet from our sun, you see. My name is Mercury, nothing orbits faster than me. The smallest planet with the second hottest degree. My name is Mercury, no one is smaller than me. My name is Ares, I am a dwarf planet The furthest north from the sun the humans found yet On January 5th in 2005 The Caltech Observatory had brought me to life A team led by astronomer Michael Ground The biggest dwarf in mass is what they had found They believe my surface is covered in nitrogen ice But you'd have to visit in 2006, the IAU named me and gave me dwarf status, yeah, officially. My name is Ares, I am a dwarf planet, the furthest north from the sun the humans found yet. Minus 390 is my average degree, if you made it to my surface then you'd probably freeze. The snow me is my one natural satellite sea. Lawlessness and it is always orbiting me. I'm 27% more massive than your Pluto. Yeah, Pluto is slightly larger than I am, you know. I take 557 Earth years to orbit the sun. When I orbit, I leave the Kuiper belt on my run. My name is Ares. I am a dwarf planet. The furthest north from the sun the humans found yet. My name is Neptune, the eighth planet from our burning sun. I've got six rings made of dust and some rocky chunks. I got my name from the Romans, it means god of the sea. My upper atmosphere has methane, that's why I have blue on me. Hydrogen and helium are the rest of my atmosphere. I have 13 moons with one still waiting to confirm it's here. Minus 392 degrees an average day on me. And my winds are the strongest than any planet in our system See, My name is Neptune, the eighth planet from our burning sun. I've got six rings made of dust and some rocky chunks. About 165 Earth years makes one.
on Neptunian year 57.7 nerds could fit in my giant sphere 2.8 billion miles is my distance from our sun One day on me is about 16 earth hours of cold fun No life as we know it could survive on me I'm the fourth largest planet in our system, you'd have to agree. My name is Neptune, the eighth planet from our burning sun. I've got six rings made of dust and some rocky chunks. A Maki Maki, I was named by the human race. I'm the third largest dwarf planet in outer space. And my color is red, and I have no atmosphere. Have you noticed my shape? I am a perfect sphere. On March 31st in 2005 is when the Polymar Observatory brought me to life. Let's visit the planet of Mars. There's so much to learn on the planet of Mars. The red planet in a billion stars. Come and sing along about the planet of Mars. On the fourth planet from our burning sun. And the second smallest planet in our solar system. I have the tallest mountain named Olympus Mons. It's the biggest volcano in our whole system. Phobos and Demos are my two moons. Phobos is larger of the orbiting two. It circles me three times a day and that's true. But it takes 30 hours for Demos to loop. Let's visit the planet of Mars. There's so much to learn on the planet of Mars. The red planet in a billion stars. Come and sing along about the planet of Mars. I'm 142 million miles away from the sun and it's heat and that's why I'm Chile. When you're on my surface and you probably freeze, I am a cold negative 81 degrees. 24 hours and 37 minutes long. It's a full day on Mars, so you've learned in this song. 687 is the amount of days it takes to orbit the sun for my year to take place. Let's visit the planet of Mars. There is so much to learn on the planet of Mars. The red planet in a billion stars. Come and sing along about the planet of Mars. Let's visit the planet of Mars. There is so much to learn on the planet of Mars. The red planet in a billion stars. Come and sing along about the planet of Mars. My name's Haumea, yeah, I am the third dwarf from the sun. I am oval in shape due to the fast rotations I'm 
was fun. My name's Almea, there is Dempe on who discovered me. It was either Caltech or a Spanish observatory. My first nickname was Santa before the IAU named me. 2008, they changed me to dwarf status officially. Yeah, I am mobile, it's because I rotate at a high speed. One of our system's fastest rotating large objects. Fun. I have two moons, Hayaka and Namaka orbiting me. Namaka is the smaller, Hayaka is large and icy. 3.9 hours makes just one day on my rocky surface. I take 285 Earth years to make one orbit. My surface is believed to have a thin but icy coating. Yeah, I'm unique to other door planets I am gloating. I'm Name. Fun. I am the Earth, the only planet with organic life. With 8.7 million species, we all fight to survive. You all live on me, so work like bees in a hive and keep this planet real. Healthy so that we can all thrive. My atmosphere is 78% nitrogen, another 21% of it is oxygen, another small percentage is of other elements. Without my atmosphere around you would be frozen. I take 365 Earth days to orbit the sun. 24 hours makes one day, that's just one time. You won't fly off into space, gravity's pulling you down As fast as 9.8 meters a second towards the ground I am the Earth, the only planet with organic life With 8.7 million species, we all fight to survive You all live on me, so work like bees in a hive And keep this planet really healthy so that we can all thrive There are that exist on me moderate polar dry and tropical are four groups you see then there is continental it is the fifth category one climate in no group is highland way above the sea i'm the third planet from the sun no one is denser than me my axis tilted 23.5 yeah that's my degree 4.5 billion years ago is when i was born you see i am Seven million species, we all fight to survive. You all live on me, so work like bees in a hive. And keep this planet really healthy so that we can all thrive. Saturn, the sixth planet from the sun. I'm known for my rings by everyone. I'm the second largest planet in our solar system. Please come sing along until my teachings are done. Out of my 62 moons, 53 are named. I am a gas giant, all astronomers claim. 36,184 is my radius of miles for you to explore. 10.44 meters, that's per second you drop. That's my gravity. Above 26.7 is 
amount of degrees to spin on my axis. I'm so cold that you freeze. I am Saturn, the sixth planet from the sun. I'm known for my rings by everyone. I'm the second largest planet in our solar system. Please come sing along until my teachings are done. I am Saturn, the sixth planet from the sun. I'm known for my rings by everyone. I'm the second largest planet in our solar system. Please come sing along. This is the Oort Cloud, a spherical layer of icy objects surrounding our sun. This is the Oort Cloud, which is a theoretical concept astronomers have spun. The Oort Cloud is the most distant region in the solar system. It's much farther than the Kuiper Belt. We're filling you with this wisdom. The Oort Cloud supposedly a giant spherical shell surrounding the rest of the solar system as you're propelled. There could be billions or even trillions of objects within the Oort Cloud. That's what NASA projects. This Oort Cloud could be the source of most comets. This is thought because of a comet's long period orbit. The distance of this Oort Cloud from your sun is estimated to be 2,000 to 100,000 AU on its run. One astronomical unit or AU is the distance between Earth and the sun like you see on your screen. This is the Oort Cloud, a spherical layer of icy objects surrounding our sun. This is the Oort Cloud, which is a theoretical concept astronomers have spun. The first description of the Oort Cloud was in 1950 by Jan Hendrik, or the Dutch astronomer you see. This Oort Cloud's divided into two regions you see here, a dish-shaped inner Oort Cloud and an outer Oort Cloud sphere. There's never been a confirmed direct observation of the Oort Cloud, so it continues to be speculation. This region's thought to have formed 4.6 billion years ago after the formation of the planets in the solar system, though. This is the Oort Cloud, a spherical layer of icy objects surrounding our sun. This is the Oort Cloud, which is a theoretical concept astronomers have spun. I'm the ISS, the International Space Station. 1998 was the year that begun my construction. I make multiple orbits around the Earth every day. Let's learn more about my history as we orbit in space. I fly around the world every 90 minutes. I orbit the Earth 16 times in 24 hours. That's legit. I'm 357 feet long from end to end. And am I after the moon? I'm the second brightest object in your sky. I have two bathrooms on board. There's also one gym. I have six sleeping quarters and six spaceship docks for the win. Here's a brief history about how I came to be. Pay attention to my incredible collaborative construction story. The idea of the space station was science fiction until the 1940s. The structure might be built by many nations. In the 1950s, designs of spaceships and space stations began to develop with the beginning of the space age and it gained traction. The first rudimentary station was created in 1969 by the linking of two Russian Soyuz vehicles in line. In 1984, the U.S. President Ronald Reagan told NASA to build the ISS for many nations. Then in 1998, 
the construction had begun of the only international space station. That year, the first segment of the ISS launched in November 20th by the Russian proton rocket named Zarya. It's no myth. The Unity node from the US launched December 4th by the space shuttle Endeavor set it on its course. The Endeavor met Zarya in orbit with the Unity node to make the first connection with the Russian segment, you know. In the year 2000, the first crew to man the space shuttle adrift was Bill Shepard, Yuri Gatsenko, and Sergei Krikalev. The US lab module was added in 2001. Then the European and Japanese lab joined in 2008, and we're not done. The ISS consists of 50 nations, Canada, Japan, and the Russian Federation. The United States and the European Space Agency. They are Belgium, Denmark, France, Germany, and Italy. The Netherlands, Norway, Spain, and Sweden, Switzerland, and the famed United Kingdom. Maybe you will have the chance to visit me someday and be another part of the ISS and its history. I'm the ISS, the International Space Station. 1998 was the year that begun my construction. I make multiple orbits around the Earth every day. Let's learn more about my history as we orbit in space. Circumstellar disc, my name is AG100546. I'm a star surrounded by a circumstellar disc from the constellation of Mosca. Now hear this. My name is HG100546. I'm 316.4 light years from your Earth with exoplanet. I'm a star with a circumstellar disk from the distance of 0.2 AU to a few hundred AU. Now this. I'm found in the constellation of Muska. Hear this. I'm a B type star with an exoplanet that does orbit. I have an exoplanet that goes by the name you see. It is HD. 100546B I'm HD 100546B I was discovered at the very large telescope in Chile Astronomers think I might be a large planet or brown dwarf Located in the disk around my star on my orbital course I'm a gas giant exoplanet, they know this for sure My mass is 752 Jupiters One orbit takes 249 years around my star I'm 53 AU away from my star That is far My discovery was announced in 2014 That's all I have to report That's enough about me I am back again It's HD 10546 Let me tell you a bit more about my disc My circumstellar disc was observed by the Hubble telescope Which should spiral patterns what they mean no one really knows my disc is fairly flat with a circular shape with a wide gap thought to be carved by my exoplanet how great when looking at the night sky try to locate the constellation of muska but you have to look late i'm a star surrounded by a circumstellar disc my name is ag 100546 I'm a star surrounded by a circumstellar disk from the constellation of Muska. Now hear this.
I am the sun, the center of your solar system. I do erupt intense high energy radiation. This radiation I expel is called the solar flare. You'll learn about them in the song and why you should care. The sun is a ball of plasma like an extremely hot ocean shaped like a wheel. This plasma is pushed around and shaped by the sun's magnetic field. When the sun's plasma swirls around by its magnetic field, it gets twisted and releases energy around sunspots they are real this energy released is caused by magnetic knots when one of these knots breaks it releases solar flares so you are taught solar flares are waves of high energy radiation shot through the solar system in which we are all one these solar flares race through space at the speed of light creating a solar proton storm these storms are no delight when millions of tons of plasma are thrown from the sun's atmosphere. These storms are called coronal mass ejections as you see right here. These CMEs reach speeds of 5.6 million miles per hour. When they hit Earth, it doesn't hurt living beings even with such power. The Earth's atmosphere protects life from the biggest solar storms by absorbing the impact so beings on the surface are safe from harm. When a CME is too big, it creates a solar super storm that occur once or twice a century so you've been warned if a solar superstorm did happen in this day and age it would shoot billions of tons of plasma from the sun i do say if this type of cme traveled across space towards the earth it would reach you in one day yeah that's fast for what that is worth its shock wave would compress earth's magnetic field making it frail the two magnetic fields would merge stretching earth's field into a thin tail this stretch tail can't contain this energy anymore when it snaps it releases explosive energy towards the earth that it stored this creates something very rare called the geomagnetic storm normally no living thing on earth would even know it had formed the only thing it would affect is your electricity because you rely on this so much it would disrupt human life you see because earth is covered in millions of electric wires and transformers this geomagnetic storm would shut down the power humans would be overturned if one of these storms hit the earth electricity and internet would not work all things powered by electricity would turn off along with all networks computers wouldn't work along with phones and electronic devices no refrigerators or any other household appliances even though we can't stop these terrible solar storms their nasty side effects can be prevented by how we are warned engineers would have a day or two to unplug major power grids until the solar storm passes earth preventing blackouts we forbid humans need to prepare for these types of storms to prevent being thrown back to the stone age before they form a cool event humans experience from any solar storm is the aurora borealis at the two poles is where they perform i'm the life-giving sun you all need me to live but i am unpredictable so solar storms i give i am the sun the center of your solar system i do erupt intense high energy radiation this radiation i expel is called the solar flare you learn about them in the song and why you should care my name is rigel a blue white super giant star in the Orion constellation I am the brightest so far William Herschel studied astronomy in the year of 1781 he discovered me I have an estimated age of seven to nine million years as for an estimate that's fine i've exhausted my core of hydrogen fuel becoming a super giant after i expanded and i cool i expect to end my life as a type 2 supernova here is more leaving a neutron star or black hole but no one knows for sure i'm classified as a blue white super giant star how fun which is a hot luminous star that's bigger than your sun 
I belong to the Orion constellation Locate me from the celestial equator from Earth on my run I am visible throughout the world of this I am sure Located in the hunter's leg of Orion I assure From the Earth my distance is 160 light years to be clear One light year is the distance light travels in one Earth year 61,500 to 363,000 times as luminous as the sun my brightness is so grand but i'll vary slightly in brightness until the day i'm done i'm thought to be 18 to 24 times more massive than your sun my radius is a straight line from my center to my circumference Which is more than 70 times that of your sun in reference My surface temperature is 12,100 kK Meaning Kelvin, a base unit of temperature in the SI I say The next time you're out at night, look for Orion in the sky Look for the hunter's leg, I'm bright to the naked eye My name is Rigel a blue white super giant star in the Orion constellation. I am the brightest so far. My name is Rigel. A blue white super giant star in the Orion constellation. I am the brightest so far. We're Alpha Centauri, the closest star system to the solar system your Earth is from. Alpha Centauri is a triple star system. We're 4.37 light years away from your sun. We're Alpha Centauri A and Alpha Centauri B, which forms a pair of stars called binary. Alpha Centauri A officially Rigel Centaurus. Alpha Centauri. Centauri B officially Toliman I trust Centauri C officially Proxima Centauri Here we'll learn about our size and our luminosity Alpha Centauri A and B are sun-like stars We're the brightest stars in the constellation Centaurus by far Alpha Centauri A has 1.1 times the mass And 1.5 times the luminosity of the sun in this class Alpha Centauri B is smaller and cooler, you should know. At 0.9 times the sun's mass and 0.4 the luminosity shown. We orbit around a common center or around one another so you'd understand better. With an orbital period of almost 80 years by far. And from a distance we're so close we look like one star. I'm Proxima Centauri, a small and faint red dwarf star. You cannot see me with the naked I, though I'm the closest star by far I'm about 4.24 light years from the earth and I'm the closest star to the sun for what that is worth discovered in 1915 by astronomer Robert Eins I'm sure in South Africa at the Union Observatory in Johannesburg my Latin name Proxima Centauri means when this is defined the nearest star of Centaurus that's all that's assigned we're Alpha Centauri the closest the star system to the solar system your earth is from alpha centauri is a triple star system we're 4.37 light years away from your sun we're alpha centauri a and alpha centauri b which forms a pair of stars called binary alpha centauri a officially rigel Centaurus. alpha centauri b officially toliman i trust Centauri C, officially Proxima Centauri. Here we'll learn about our size and our luminosity. <laughs>